What's going on guys and welcome back to the channel for another FM22 rebuild and I know I know the videos have been a little bit sparse recently it's because I moved house as you can probably tell by this janky setup behind me but today we are back with a video we are back with the rebuild and we are going to be rebuilding Leeds United. Now, I've been doing rebuilds in different various countries across Europe over the past few weeks and I wanted to return to the Premier League and I thought Leeds would be a really good opportunity. Um, they used to be relatively giant in terms of European football and obviously they've had their sort of time where they've dropped all the way down to League One and they've sort of resurrected and come back up into the Premier League with Bielsa. Let's see if we can take them to the next step. I wanted to come back into the Premier League because of the financial aspect of being in the Premier League. Some of the other leagues that I've worked in recently in these rebuild challenges are nowhere near as financially beneficial as being in the Premier League. Um, so I'm looking to see what we can kind of do with that money and how we can improve Leeds United and get them back into the Champions League. Now, I'm gonna handicap myself a little bit with this by saying that the only players that we can sign are going to be English players. Now, when I was younger, it, Leeds had the players that were sort of elite level players like Rio Ferdinand, Lee Bowyer, those sorts of players um, coming through the ranks of, uh, you know, it was a core of English players for the most part. I know they had Kiel, Viduka, Ian Hart, I see he's Irish, I suppose, etc. like that. But I really wanted to see what I could do with just signing English players. And hopefully we can get some English players into the England team and maybe they can win some honours whilst they're there as well so if this is the sort of content you like guys please do drop a like on it down below and if you are new right here hit that subscribe button and ring that bell so you're told each and every time that we upload a video so that you don't miss another one of these rebuilds and also whilst you're down there let me know in the comments who you would like me to rebuild next weekend so let's get into it so guys, we are talking Leeds United, and this is their history. Obviously, they've won the Premier League three times here, 1969, 1974, and 1992. They are two-time uh, Europa League winners, 1968 and 1971, one-time FA Cup winner, and then they've won the Carabao Cup, they've won the Championship four times, and they've also won the Community Shield uh, twice as well. Uh, this is the goal. We are trying to return Leeds United back to their heyday. European Knights at Ellen Road, and I think ultimately I'd love to win a Premier League. I don't know how realistic that's going to be, but we are going to try our damnedest to win a Premier League title. Obviously last season they finished in ninth, which is a very, very good return after many, many years down in the Championship um, and, and including a couple seasons in League One as well. Um, so the, t the goal is to rebuild Leeds United and get them as good as humanly possible. In terms of finances, I said I wanted to work in the Premier League because we do have a, a, a wealth of resources available we've got a 10 million pound budget in the first transfer window um i'm not going to spend any of it just because i kind of want to see what this team can do as is obviously it's got some stars in it which we will go over very very shortly um but we're 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 going to see what we can do over the course of five years guys basically that's that's the goal um in terms of everything in terms of the club vision uh, this is how we are looking if I uh, expand that so it's on the other side of the screen. We need to play entertaining football. We need to play attacking football and develop players using the club's youth system. The five-year ongoing plan is to increase commercial revenue, grow the club's reputation, sign young players and uh, to develop for profit, expand the stadium and work within the wage budget. And within this current season here, we are expected to finish inside the top half of the Premier League, reach the fifth round of the Emirates FA Cup and uh, reach the fourth round of the EFL uh, trophy, uh, which is going to be interesting to see how we do get on in these cup competitions. And then their longer term goal, as you can see down here, end of the 23-24 season is to qualify for the Europa League via league placement um, and then obviously continue to qualify uh, for the Europa League as a minimum. I think the Premier League is going to be a tough one. Um, obviously, we all know how good Liverpool, uh, Manchester United and Manchester City can be in this year's iteration of FM. So we're going to need a good tactic to do it. And what we're going to do here, guys, we are using GYRFM's Bassett's Brilliance. It is his 4-4-2. I thought if we're doing an English-only rebuild of Leeds United, we need to be playing 4-4-2, don't we? Um, I'll leave a link in the description to this tactic so you can go and check it out yourself. I know what people do say, though, that, you know, using other people's downloaded tactics, blah, blah, blah. This is an entertainment purpose. I want to kind of see how we can get on and how far we can go. And I thought this 4-4-2 was perfect for what we were trying to achieve today. So that is why we are using that. As I said, links for this tactic will be 
link down in the description. Please do go and check it out and uh, go and show GYRFM some love. He is a fantastic tactician and my assistant manager for all PvP uh, <laughs> tournaments and competitions that we are in right now. So this is the Leeds United team. I think I've quick picked the best 11. Let me just check that I have done that. Okay, there we go. This is the best 11 that we've got to start season number one. Um, Mesler in goal, Dallas Lorente, Strick, I think is how you say that, uh, Junior Firpo, Harrison Klitsch, Phillips, Rafina, um, and then Bamford and Rodrigo up top. This is a nice little team. Obviously, they've got interesting options on the bench as well. Luke Ayling, former Bristol City man. Uh, Shackleton, Tyler Roberts is a promising youngster from, from memory. Uh, Dan James is fast. Robin Koch, um as well uh joe gelhart i believe is is a highly talented prospect yeah five star potential uh player here that we have as a striker uh, which is nice to see obviously liam cooper i believe is club captain for sure as well there's a couple of couple of players in here that aren't getting into this starting 11 the midfield team's quite nice actually uh harrison klitsch calvin phillips and rafina rafina down at a three star why is that is it because of the role that i'm asking him to play it is because I'm asking him to play as a left midfielder rather than attacking left and attacking right. But that's fine. He's our best player, in my opinion. Um, and I'm looking to see, actually, how many goals Patrick Bamford can score with this team. Um, so these are the competitions. We've run through them already. We've got um, Blackburn Rovers in the second round of the Carabao Cup. Emirates FA Cup, obviously, we don't enter until January. And then the Premier League uh, starts in one day's time if we go to the premier league and take a look at the season preview just to start things we're 300 to 1 to win the division i don't think i don't think winning the league in season one number one is realistic anyway um but we are expected to finish in 12th so that's going to be interesting to see how we get on we'll be back at the end of the season so then guys season number one is over and it's relatively disappointing. We finished down in 13th, 14 victories, nine draws, and 15 losses with a goal difference of minus six here. Um, really, really disappointing. It's kind of where the bookies expected us. They predicted us to finish in 12th. We finished in 13th. I'm actually quite disappointed with it, to be honest. We're knocked out in the quarterfinals of the Emirates FA Cup uh, by Brentford and knocked out in the fourth round of the Carabao Cup uh, by Spurs. Um, 11 goals for Patrick Bamford. He was the top goal scorer in the Premier League. Also top goal scorer for us in that Carabao Cup. Let's expand the Premier League and have a little look at things a little bit more. Um, what seems to be our issue then? We have conceded more goals than we scored. Okay, so we need to tighten up at the back. We've got 54 goals scored and 60 goals conceded. Seven goals against Manchester United, Liverpool. Six against Man City and Villa. We're just shipping too many goals. To be perfectly honest, we need to tighten things up in that regard. Um, Brentford, Watford and Burnley all go down. Um, and Southampton get themselves up into sixth with Wolves. Chelsea down in eighth. Spurs, tenth. Wowzers. Um, some interesting stuff going on in this first season. So obviously in terms of that club vision, they're kind of okay with me at the moment. Uh, but we do have an absolute war chest to go uh, and improve the team after season number one. We've got 54, just under 55 million to spend on this team to make them even better moving forward. So fingers crossed we can do that and fingers crossed we can actually improve the team. Um, looking at things though, if we go into here, you can see top goal scorer for the club, uh, Rodrigo with 14, Patrick Bamford with 14, Tyler Roberts got eight. We're just not scoring enough. We're also conceding too many goals, but <laughs> that's kind of the way that football works, isn't it? If you're not scoring enough and conceding too many, you're not going to win many football matches. So we're going to have to go away. We're going to have to strengthen. We're going to see what we can do uh, in this transfer market with 55 million for season number two. I'll be back for that in a sec. So guys, we're going to start you with a transfer update and I have been very busy. Um, on the outgoings, we have sold Rodrigo to Arsenal for £32 million. We've also sold Junior Firpo uh, to Norwich for £15 million. These are because of the players that I wanted to bring into this role. Um, and obviously, I don't, I personally don't rate Rodrigo. Um, how many goals did he score for us last, year, last season? I think he was joint top goal scorer, but... Uh, yeah, 10, 10 goals in the league, 14 in all competitions. Didn't average over a seven. Um, Arsenal came knocking, 32 million pounds, so we would have made a profit on him. I'm actually all right with it. Um, we've made some signings, so Luke Thomas comes in to play as our left back. We signed him for 45 million. I will say a lot of this, guys, is in installments. 
so it will impact us later on down the line but we needed to get these players and you need to go in and get someone like Luke Thomas ASAP in your saves if you are doing it I think he's so well rounded he's so young as well 21 years of age uh, with that five star potential I think he could be uh, the left back for the entire remainder of this save to be honest um we sold Rodrigo to Arsenal, which freed up Eddie Nketiah. We got him for 21 million. So we sell one player, get one player in. I love Eddie Nketiah in this game. I don't know why. He seems to suit the match engine. He seems to always score goals. He wanted to come in as a fringe player. And I actually think he'll play quite a lot of football for us. Electric in terms of his physicals. And he knows where the goal is. Knows how to put the ball in the back of the net. So that is exactly what I'm hoping he can do for us. In terms of his career, he played last night, uh, last um last season at Arsenal nine times got three goals which actually in terms of competitive fixtures not too bad in terms of starts he got four starts in the league and scored twice one start in a in a cup competition and he scored as well so I actually do think he's quite prolific so I'm looking forward to seeing now he's come back he he was at, um he was at Leeds on loan when they were in the championship and now he's here full time Eddie Nketiah is back we've also spent 77 million on Dwight McNeil I've this is the first time I'm going to manage Dwight McNeil um, I bought him and I spent that much money because I thought we were going to sell Rapina. Um, Real Madrid were interested but didn't meet his uh, didn't meet his valuation. So I bought Dwight McNeil as a as a sort of backup option for Rafina to come into the starting eleven. Um, and we've not sold Rafina, so I don't know where Dwight McNeil is going to play. Um, this is my first time managing him. He always seems to break it into the England setup for me. So I'm looking forward to seeing how he gets on. In preseason, he's been pretty good. In his last five games, he's got seven goals and one assist. So I'm hoping he can carry some of that form into the new season. We've also spent some money as well. Hamza Chowdhury, uh, he comes in on a uh, on a cut price deal from uh, Leicester City, 3.6 million for him. Uh, relatively balanced in terms of physicals, good mentals, and solid enough technicals where I need him to be, just as a little bit more of a defensive option in that midfield. And we've also spent 70 million on Max Aaron's. Uh, as I said, guys, we've been very busy in this transfer uh, transfer window, trying to get in the youngsters, the young English players that I think can really take us forward to the next level. Uh, part of that, though is a lot of installments. I will say, I hold my hands up, no, I've not magic 300 million out of thin air. A lot of it is installments. We're gonna to have to impact us and kind of restrain us ourselves a little bit more moving forward. But as some of these players like Max Aarons and Luke Thomas and stuff develop, that's kind of where I'm hoping we can be at. In terms of competitions, guys, we're in the same three as uh, as always. We've got more coming in the second round of the Carabao Cup, Emirates FA Cup, and that Premier League trophy um, that we are all, all chasing. In terms of the club vision, this is kind of what's expected this season. They want a mid-table finish, fifth, in the FA Cup, fourth round in the EFL Cup, uh, whilst all the other stuff. They, they they are delighted that we are signing players under the age of 23 for the first team. We are trying to adhere to that club culture and developing players using the club's youth system. Uh, they are saying that some of the players that we've signed are part of that, so I'm, I'm quite happy with the way these things have turned out. I'll be back at the end of season number two. Season number two is done and dusted then, and we have managed to perform a lot better than last season we are up into third we have qualified for the champions league um beating manchester city into that third place spot chelsea and manchester united falling apart here and dwight mcneil coming in as our top goal scorer with 20 goals in the premier league i'm going to expand dwight mcneil he's actually played a lot of time at striker this year um for, for want of a better reason rafina's probably better than him on the left hand side so he's ended up playing up top a lot in terms of his development and the tactic, I think he's played striker, yeah, 37 games at striker, 23 goals, 7 assists, averaging a 7.25 up top. Um, and in terms of 23 goals and 7 assists in 41 starts, I'm actually quite quite impressed with it for a winger playing up front. I think Dwight McNeil's done very, very well. But we do qualify for the Champions League. 23 victories, 5 draws and 10 losses. We need to tighten up some of these losses. Um, some of the ones you would expect in there. Liverpool, Manchester United, uh, Man City, Chelsea. But maybe if we can tighten up some of these other ones. Not tighten the fourth round, the FA Cup by Chelsea. Not tighten the fourth round of that Carabao Cup by Brentford. Eddie Nketiah. Also, goal scoring machine, 19 goals, 11 uh, assists for Eddie and Ketia. So I'm glad we brought him in. Uh, he is already better than Patrick Bamford. So I'm hoping we can uh, continue to move forward. So it looks like making the money, making the splash and spending the cash has really, really helped us this time around. Let's expand that Premier League. Last season, we had a minus goal difference. This time around, we got a positive 33 goal difference. We've conceded a lot less goals. I think it's around 10, 12, 
15 less goals, but we've scored almost 30 more. So that really, really signing someone like Dwight McNeil has obviously come into fruition and really, really helped us this season. Um, obviously, we're going to have the Champions League to, to contend with next year. Uh, which I think is going to be a little bit of a detriment to us. But that revenue, that exposure that it brings in can only be a good thing. I wonder how much money I've got to spend. Let's have a little look. So we've got another 65 million to spend. Bearing in mind, I've already agreed loads of installments and stuff. As you can see, next season's budget is around the 30 million mark because of these installments that I've set up for a lot of these signings. So we're going to go out. We're going to spend as much money, as much of that 65 million as I possibly can. And let's see what we can do as we strengthen going into season number three and our return to Champions League football. So I have been busy in that transfer market yet again. Tyler Roberts has left the club. He's gone to Wolves for £6 million. Luca Thomas has gone to Sunderland as well for like 6 k But we've been out and we've bought. We've spent. We are we are big time now. Uh, we've gone over to PSV and signed Noni. Uh, Madiuk. Mad, Madiuk. I can never say Nonny's last name, Maddy UK. Um, electric winger on this right-hand side. Uh, great dribbling, great first touch, great technique as well. Fantastic physicals. Um, will be breaking into the England team no, in no time at all. We went over to PSV and we spent a lot of money on him. 75 million. He's had two okay seasons for PSV in this particular save and I'm hoping he can go from strength to strength and balance Rafina on that uh who's on that left hand side on the right hand side so we've actually got threats going down both sides of the field uh will make teams uh have to pet, sit up and pay attention to uh to us we needed a sense back as well so I went over to Everton and signed Ben Godfrey for 71 million pounds as I said the finances in the Premier League when you're here are just drastically different guys so it's a completely different kettle of fish. Uh, ben Godfrey, fantastic physicals, good concentration is kind of what I look for in a centre-back. His positioning needs a bit of work, but in terms of his work rate and tackling and stuff, he's pretty good as that uh, centre central defender. Um, his value has gone up quite exponentially as well, which is quite nice to see. In terms of some of the other outgoings, uh, we've let a lot of players go on free transfers as well. Luke Ayling, Charlie Allen, uh, Spencer, Somerville, um, and McKistry. Uh, we also sold pass Pascal Sturick uh, over to PSG for £35 million. He was an all right centre back, but he left and we went and got the money and spent it on Ben Godfrey, a, a, an English centre back, which will definitely help. We've also bought Declan Rice for £80 million. Quid. Um, I think Declan Rice is perfect for this midfield. We've also linked up him and Calvin Phillips, that England midfield that did so well for England in the Euros. Um, it's kind of what I was looking to do. His natural fitness, his mentals are out, absolutely out of this world, um, and as well as good technicals. And because we're in the Champions League now, we were able to attract a player like Declan Rice, who was still at West Ham. Obviously, it is all set up there. £80 million. Pounds. I can assure you I didn't pay all of that in one go. He's had an okay time at uh, West Ham so far and I'm hoping he can kind of take us from strength to strength here. In terms of the competitions we are in the group stage of the Champions League because of our coefficient ranking in England and obviously we do have the Premier League, FA Cup and Carabao Cup much the same. In terms of the club vision for this season, all they want us to do in terms of the Champions League is just to be competitive uh, which considering we are in the group stage will be okay. They now want us to start becoming recognised as the best of the rest in the Premier League uh, which I definitely think is achievable and they also want a top half finish in the Prem uh, this time around. I think being in the Champions League is going to cause us a little bit of an issue. Um, our squad is not the deepest in terms of personnel. We've got a lot of elite talents, but in terms of depth, we're not necessarily there. So I'm intrigued to see how season number three gets on. I'll be back at the end of the year. So I thought playing in the Champions League would really cost us, and it really doesn't seem like it has. Um, we finished third in the Premier League again, 75 points, 11 losses, unfortunately, this season, three draws and 24 victories. Some of the losses, again, uh, against certain play, uh, certain teams, Sheffield United, Bournemouth, Barnsley. We, we shouldn't be losing that one, especially the Barnsley one at home. Dwight McNeil, again, top goal scorer in the Premier League for us. Um, and Bamford doing the work in the other competitions. Four goals for him in that Champions League stage. I actually don't know where we got knocked out in the Champions League. Let's have a little look. We were in Champions League Group D, which we qualified top of. That is a very difficult group. Dortmund, Lyon and Barcelona. And we finished top of the group. Uh, I assume on head-to-head -head because of uh, our, our goal difference is worse than Dortmund. So I assume it's on head-to-head. -head. Um, so we finished top of the group, meaning we go through... Uh, into the knockout stages where we take on Porto in the first round and we beat them 
after a penalty shootout on 3-3. Then we then we take on PSG and PSG's a step too far. Lose 2-0 at home and lose 4-0 at the Parc de Prance away to PSG. It's kind of no real shame there. It's a mixed bag of results in here. It's like win one lot, win one, lose one, win one, lose one. Um, but all in all, very, very good season. If we go back to the competitions, knocked out in the fifth uh, round of the FA Cup by Liverpool and got to the semi-finals of the Carabao Cup. And we lost to Southampton, who ultimately went on to win the trophy. Would have been really, really nice to lift a trophy. Uh, but a very good season in the Premier League. And obviously, these additions that I've been making have been making a big, big difference um in terms of season number four obviously we're still in the champions league uh so we've got more money 46 million it the, the the volume of money in the premier league is ridiculous but the amount of money that i have also set up in installments is also equally ridiculous so um we're gonna see what we can do in terms of uh season number four in terms of season uh number four and the personnel that we can bring in um let's see what we can do this team is starting to purr Right then guys, transfer update for season number four. The main outgoing is that Mesler has gone to Leicester City for £41 million. Uh, the French goalkeeper, I thought it was time to move him on. Uh, he's okay, he's nothing spectacular, or that's what I thought for him uh, so far this year. Uh, conceded a lot of goals, only, only just hit the double digits in terms of clean sheets over the last two seasons. So £41 million to Leicester, I thought was a good bit of business. And we've replaced him with Joe uh, Bursick from Stoke for a lot less money uh, young English goalkeeper who could get a lot better uh, technically I think he's very very good his, his physicals are quite nice as well he's got a nice resolute personality so he sold one for 45 million uh, 42 million pounds and we replaced him with a goalkeeper for 25 million pounds he's bounced around a little bit Southampton making two million pounds profit on him last season I know he didn't concede he conceded a lot of goals and didn't keep a lot of clean sheets but that's because he's at the opposite end of the table to where we want to be in terms of some of the other signings though uh, we went out and we we signed DCL Dominic Carwitlow and I thought we needed another striker to sort of balance things he was unhappy at Everton obviously in England international I thought it would be an interesting one to sort of partner him up front with Eddie and Katia Dwight McNeil Patrick Bamford I think that as a four uh, to complement the two striker positions that we've got is a really really good set of set of centre forwards so I'm hoping he can sort of add to what uh, some of the tighter games and try and help us outscore some of our opponents is kind of what we're looking to do obviously in terms of the competitions again we are much the same as last season with the Champions League entering in the group stage in terms of the tactic and the team now i'm sure you want to see our best 11 uh, so this is kind of what we're looking at right now we've got bursic in goal aaron's godfrey kosh uh thomas uh noni on the right phillips declan rice uh, and rafina on the left and then dwight mcneil and eddie and ketia up top the squad i must admit guys is not very deep and that is partially because we're just not getting the new gens through. These are the new gens in terms of their current abilities and potentials. Uh, Conan Bakayoko, potentially one of the better ones. And he is a long, long way away from Premier League football. That is for damn sure. Um, so in terms of all competitions, again, kind of looking to, to power forward. In terms of the Premier League, are they backing us anymore now? Now we're going into season four. So they think we'll finish in eighth. We've got Champions League football, 33 to one to win the Premier League title. I think third is probably the peak of where we're going to get. Let's see what happens come the end of the season. Okay, guys, season is over and what a season it has been. We are Europa League winners. I touched on it at the start of the save. They've won the Europa League twice before in their history, have Leeds United, and they've won it again here. We finished third in the Premier League, 79 points, our highest points return thus far. We had a very difficult Champions League group, as you can see on the screen. Bayern Munich, AC Milan, ourselves in young boys. We did unfortunately finish third, Bayern and AC Milan proving too strong, but that meant we went on a run in the Europa League and managed to win it uh, in that final, beating RB Salzburg by the looks of things. Dwight McNeil, I'm telling you, man. Dwight McNeil, I'm so glad I signed him. Uh, and Jack Harrison with the goals. Obviously, a very English-looking side now. Um, getting the business done. An English side in Europe playing 4-4-2. Uh, majority English players getting it done all the way along. Uh, fourth round of the Emirates FA Cup beaten by Leicester. And fourth round of the Carabao Cup beaten by Watford. But an amazing start. Amazing season all round. League position very, very nice. And we picked up... a a bit of European silverware, which is kind of the main objective for this. Uh, this particular save was to return Leeds United to European football. Um, 
and we've definitely done that and let's have a look at our run in terms of the Europa League super quick let's turn off all the competitions and let's turn back on the Europa League so we go in into it go in into the first knockout round where we beat Leo then absolutely annihilate CSK Sofia uh, then we take on Leon beat them comfortably without even conceding a goal we beat Chelsea 3-2 uh, away from home at Stamford Bridge, uh, Eddie and Ketia were two, and Max Aaron's with one. Reese James and Christian Pulisic with the goals for Chelsea, and then uh, in the game at Ellen Road, that finished 2 2. Dwight McNeil and Nonny with the goals, Lukaku and Mason Mount with the goals for Chelsea. But the job at Stamford Bridge getting it done, and then Salzburg in the final, which I've already shown you, uh, winning that one 2 0 at that neutral venue. And um, ultimately, guys very very happy with how things have got on Premier League as I said highest points return thus far 24 victories 7 draws 7 losses we've definitely tightened up the amount of losses that we've got this season which is very very good very very happy to see that um, and we've won some European silverware which is absolutely massive winning that Europa League is huge um, obviously it means we go into uh, the Premier League uh, the Champions League anyway we would have done that regardless because of our league position but being able to secure it by winning the Europa League is even better guys I cannot stress how much better it is to go in as the champion of the Europa League I just really prefer it. I think you go into pot one as well uh, which really really does help our ranking hopefully fingers crossed we don't get another group like this we've had some horrendous groups in the Champions League thus far so I'm hoping it kind of ends now and next season we can have a final uh, a uh, final good run in the Champions League. So unfortunately, we've not really had it uh, thus far. Getting to the quarterfinals one year where we lost to PSG. I've got some money to spend. No surprises there. It's only 29 million. As I said, this is where the the, the installments that I've set up for a lot of these players are going to start impacting. Um, so fingers crossed we can kind of make some signings maybe. I don't know what we're going to be able to do with 30 million. Players are really expensive as we're in 2025 going into the 2025-2026 season. But fingers crossed guys we can do something for season number 5. Right then guys, fifth and final season. Here we are. Obviously, we have a little extra competition this time around. We are in the UEFA Super Cup, having won the Europa League last season. We take on Liverpool in the season opener. Um, and then obviously we have all the other competitions, Champions League, Group Stage, Premier League, FA Cup and Carabao Cup to deal with. However, for Season 5, there is a transfer update. Uh, we did manage to, uh, I forgot to mention uh, last season, we did bring in Ainsley Maitland-Niles um, right at the end of the window. A very good uh, utility player, 19.25 million for the man from Arsenal. And as you can see, he can play pretty much anywhere and everywhere that you need him to. Um, I think ultimately he is a very, very good uh, utility player. As you can see, he played 33 times for us last season. Uh, in, a, in a mixture of positions uh, however going into season number five we have had the big transfer we did spend that money that we were allocated we have purchased john stones from manchester city um Whilst he's only a three-star ability player and three-star potential at age 31, he's got 75 caps for England now. Mentally, fantastic. Physically, despite being 31, uh, a 13 pace is absolutely fine. I can deal with that. He's good on both feet. Very, very good technically. And I'm hoping he can be a little bit of a leader uh, to this slightly younger side that we have here. Uh, so we spent 40 million on him. It could rise up to 48. And that is the only bit of business that we did, guys. Everything else is from the season before. So in terms of the team... And our best 11, if we quick pick without restriction, our best 11. This is what we are looking at. Bursic and goal, Aaron's, Godfrey, Stones, Thomas, uh, Nonny, Phillips, Declan Rice, Rafina, and then uh, Dwight McNeil and Eddie Nketiah up front. This time around, though, we do have that extra little bit of depth. We've got Maitland Niles, Jack Harrison, uh, Dominic Calvert Lewin, Robin Koch, um, Dan James. Patrick Bamford, uh, Joe uh, Gelhart. We've got this extra level of depth that we've not really had before. So I'm hoping this can be a very, very good season. And ultimately, a lot of these players have grown into very, very good players. I'm actually very impressed with the pickup of Ben Godfrey. I actually think he's been very, very good so far. Declan Rice currently wanted by Liverpool, uh, but we will be keeping hold of Declan Rice, at least for this season, the fifth and final season. In terms of the club vision, though, this is kind of what is expected of us this season. They're pleased with the financial aspect of releasing Hamza Chowdhury. That's a swing and a miss. I can understand that, guys. It's just not a problem. Uh, this season, though, they want us to reach the first knockout round of a, as a minimum of the Champions League. They want us to... Uh, they don't care about the Super Cup, actually. They want us to qualify for the Europa League in the Premier League, reach the quarterfinals of the FA Cup, and now the EFL Cup is no longer important to the league's board. And then beyond that, they want us to start qualifying for the Champions League as a regular fi uh, fixture. 
let's see what happens. In terms of how we've got on though, I'm, I'm very impressed with how things have gone. Uh, let's see how this team, and this is, this is the best 11 that I've had so far, how that deals with season number five. I'll be back with that in just a second. So guys, it is the end of season number five, and we have managed to go back to back in the Europa League, beating Newcastle. 2-1 in that final as you can see on the screen we were unfortunate to get knocked out of the Champions League we were in a group with Atleti and RB Salzburg and uh, Salzburg doing the business there finishing in second very very competitive by the looks of things Karabag the whipping boys of the group in terms of the Premier League 73 points for us this season not our best points return by a long chalk uh, but we do obviously qualify for the Champions League by winning the Europa League Manchester United Arsenal Man City and Liverpool the teams above us we did beat Liverpool in that Super Cup final after a 4-4 draw. We beat them on penalties. Let's have a look. John Stone's own goal in the 92nd minute, looking like it's sending it two penalties. You know, you love what happens when you simulate these games. We score in the 90th minute. You think we've won it. And then John Stone scores an OG. Who missed the penalty? The decisive penalties for Liverpool. Jordan Henderson and Andy Robertson. And on our side, Dan James missed, but Bamford, Stones, Rice, Phillips, and Ketia and Harrison all scoring from the spot. Clean sweep from the Englishman and and the Welshman missed. Interesting. Interesting. Um, so we lift the Super Cup. Not that it really matters. Knocked out in the semi-finals of the Emirates FA Cup by Leicester City. And knocked out in the fourth round of the Carabao by Arsenal. Uh, however, Europa League. Let's have a look at our schedule, actually, first and foremost. Let's see who we beat on the way. Unfortunately, we did go out of the Champions League again. But it does give us a good opportunity to defend our... Europa League title. So first knockout stage, we take on Lille and we beat them uh, relatively comfortably, five-two in all comp, uh, in all comps in both legs. Um, then we take on AC Milan, we beat them at home two-nil. Dominic uh, three-nil. Sorry, what? Sorry, two-nil. Yes, there we go. Uh, Samuels and Dominic Calvert-Lewin scoring late. Malik Samuels coming in, one of the youngsters here. If you want to pick up this save. His, he will be in the Discord. The save will be in the Discord. You can go and get your hands on Malik Samuels. I think he looks like a very, very good prospect moving forward. 24, what's that? 43 goal contributions in 43 non-competitive appearances. Probably worth a look. Uh, Celta Vigo uh, were up next, the team in the quarterfinals. We drew 1-1 away in Spain and then beat them 2-1 back at Ellen Road. Then we take on Arsenal, losing 3-2 at the Emirates. Uh, goals from Martinelli and Sabozlai for Arsenal. Rafina and Noni with the goals for us. Then we beat them, absolutely tranked them at Ellen Road, 3-0. Super Eddie dialing it up against his old club. Uh, another three goals for Eddie Nketiah. I love Eddie Nketiah. I think he's fantastic in this year's FM. Currently a four-star player. Still not capped by England at 27. Uh, so he doesn't look like he's going to get capped by England at all. Then we take on Newcastle in that final who have James Ward-Price sent off at 1-0 down. Dominic Calvert-Lewin had already scored at that point. Danny Olmo equalizes for Newcastle. We will go and have a look at this Newcastle team in a second. And then DCL popping up 89th minute winner. So let's go on to this match report. And let's have a look at this Newcastle team. So uh, Urakan, I believe he's the Turkish goalkeeper in goal who they have picked up from Trabonspor. Uh, looks like an okay goalkeeper, nothing um, ridiculous. Uh, Hassaj, uh, Sionsu, I hate saying that guy's name. Martinez, I don't know who this were, who this in particular is. Lissandro Martinez, the guy from Ajax. Okay, very nice signing. Then at left back, they have Hernandez. They have Tio Hernandez at the left back. Okay. He's gone from AC Milan to Newcastle. Crazy. Uh, Marcus Antonio, obviously the Brazilian from Shakhtar, alongside James Ward-Price. Then they have Rafa, Dani Almo, Alan St. Maximin. And then they have Alvarez up front, who had a very poor game at 6.4, but looks like a very, very good player. Great heading, great finishing. He's almost got double digits in pretty much everything, apart from leadership and tackling. How much did Bayern pay for him, just out of curiosity? 6.25 million. If you're on the hunt for a bargain player, Augustine Alvarez from Penarol in Uruguay could well be an option for you. But yeah, he looks like a very good prospect. But we beat Newcastle. Nonetheless, we beat Newcastle. We live back-to-back -back Europa League titles. Um, ultimately, very, very happy with how things have gone. Yeah, okay, 73 points in the Premier League. Not really the best. 
Um, but this team can go from strength to strength and they will be again in the Champions League next season but that is where i am going to leave this particular save if you guys want to play this save join the discord there will be a link down in the description head over join the discord and come into the community i have a thread in there i have a channel sorry in there which is called fm22 rebuilds once this video has gone live the video uh, not the video the save file will be posted in the discord channel for you guys to pick up just kick me out as manager take over yourself and see how far you can take this lead united team but but that is where I'm going to leave it for today. If you have enjoyed it, don't forget to drop a like on the video down below. Subscribe to the channel if you are new around here. And until next time, guys, take care of yourselves, take care of each other. I'll see you on another one very, very soon.